Welcome to Stressed Out. So thanks for joining me tonight. We are going to talk about being stressed. We're going to talk about how to reduce that stress anytime, anytime that you want. So here, let me stop this. And I want to start with a question. Have you ever started your morning with like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's already 6 a.m. Maybe if I just hit the snooze just one time, maybe I'll feel better in nine minutes. And then realize that you shut the alarm off instead of hitting the snooze. And you're like, oh crap, I've got a morning full of meetings and I'm not prepared for it. Because I was gonna get up early today and get all that done. Well, here's to a start to another great day, not. So this is how I started many mornings. But now I am up when the alarm goes off and I'm actually awake. Before, I, I just felt unhealthy, I felt heavy, and now I feel strong, I feel good, I've got a good BMI, and before, I was totally stressed out, but now I'm full of joy. So I have a question. Who was chased by a lion today? Anybody? No? Well, maybe by the time that we're finished, you may change your mind. Are you curious? Did you bring any of that stress with you today? Just go ahead and load up on that experience and, and just feel all that because you're gonna leave it here. You're gonna leave your stress here and you're gonna leave here with a way that you can reduce your stress anytime you want. Now, I grew up in the 60s and we thought Kraft macaroni and cheese and Fruit Loops and Coke was a balanced diet. Well, think about it. You had dairy, grains, fruit, and water. I'm sure there's a little bit of water in Coke, right? So what we didn't know is that it was literally killing us. Now, while I was young and didn't realize that the food was killing me, as I got older, I didn't realize that stress was going to do me in too. I worked for a nonprofit for 21 years. I know what most of you are thinking, nonprofit, laid back, serving people, doing good things, right? And well, that's for the people who are giving direct service. And they get all the warm and fuzzies when things are going well. Not so much for the finance or executive staff who have to figure out how to pay for that. Now, over those years, I was part of a three-person executive team, all women, by the way, and we grew that nonprofit from $300,000 annual budget to $50 million. Now, that sounds awesome, right? And it was. But it also came at a tremendous cost to my health. And my blood pressure went from 90 over 60, which I know that's on the low side, but it went to like 180. And that went undiagnosed for several years. The other area that went downhill was my weight, or I should say uphill, right? And my body fat was through the roof. I mean, I was literally killing myself. Now, my turnaround was not overnight. And this has been a journey. It's been a journey of learning, awareness and trial and error. And I was really skeptical when I first started because I thought 
change could only happen through sheer willpower, of which I don't have any. But I realized it was much easier than that. And I was able to follow through in a way that I never had before. And now at 63, I've got more energy, I'm more productive, and I have more joy in my life. And I'm expecting many more years of the same. Now, I have the opportunity to help others just like you do the same. My name is Deborah Loader. I'm a certified health coach. And I help women who don't have the energy that they used to. And I help them turn that around. I believe that healthy does not have to be hard. And if you feel healthy and vibrant, anything else in your life is possible. So whether you're so stressed I could peel you off the ceiling, or whether you're only stressed once in a while, or whether you don't think that you're stressed at all, you'll learn something that can take your health to the next level. And over the next 40 minutes or so, I'll talk about health and stress, and then we'll talk about how to reduce your stress. So would that be helpful? I've developed a program called the Total Transformation System, and one part of that program is teaching people how to discover what's possible, you know, discover what's possible in their life and how to experience what they desire. I've been helping people successfully experience total transformation and using the exact steps that I'm going to teach you today. Now it's my goal to help you connect the dots and show you exactly how you can be successful too, even if you've never done it before. We have a limited amount of time together and I'm going to teach you as much as I can about our topic. And I promise before we finish, I'll show you how you can take it further if you want to. So what happens in our body when we're stressed out? And is that contributing to making it hard or nearly impossible to lose weight? Now, one of the ways our bodies respond to stress is with digestive stress. And that's the thing that has you not digesting foods very well and that has you store fat. And everyone else is saying that digestive stress is caused by what you eat. And I'm saying digest, digestive stress is more than that. I'm saying it's caused by 25% of what you eat and 75% of who you're being. And so who are you being when you eat? Are you moving at warp speed? Are you constantly eating on the go? Are you multitasking during your meal? And these are all ways that we feed the stress response. And eating under stress is, is commonplace, right? Has anyone else done that? All right. So when I'm working with clients, we deconstruct not only the foods that they eat, but also their lifestyle. And we start the conversation during a discovery session. And that's a 60 minute phone call. And we talk about lifestyle and stress. Now stress is the opposite of relaxation. So what do we feel when we're stressed? And when do we feel stressed? And mostly we feel stressed when we're moving too fast. And if you've worked for a stronger metabolism and, but you've not been able to lose weight, there's a really good reason. And that's that your life is moving too fast. Because when we move through life too fast, we destroy the metabolism and we create that digestive stress where the food doesn't actually get digested. 
and, and eating in a physiological stress response, it diminishes our calorie burning power. So the slower you eat, the faster you metabolize. And the more relaxed you are throughout your day, the more energy you will have. So let's start with a short science lesson. I, I promise it will be short. So it's because it's helpful for you to have an intellectual understanding so that you can relate to what's happening in your body. So when I talk about this, just think about your digestive system, okay? So you eat the healthiest meal on the planet. But if you eat in a stressed out, anxious state, then your digestion is dramatically diminished. And from a scientific perspective, what happens is you eat a piece of food and the saliva starts breaking down the food. And then it moves you know, through, through your system into your stomach. But when you're stressed, the salivary enzyme content in your, in your mouth is actually reduced. So the breakdown of protein and fat and carbs in the stomach is impaired. And the blood flow to the slow intestine is actually reduced by as much, much as four times. So which translates into decreased assimilation of vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients. If you have ever eaten a full meal and you still felt hungry, this is a really good sign that the stress response was on and that your body didn't assimilate the nutrients. So let's talk about the connection between stress and metabolism. Okay, that's the metabolism is what burns your fat, right? So the autonomic nervous system, this is the nervous system that's responsible for your digestive activity. And I know this is probably taking you back to nightmares from high school biology, right? So the autonomic nervous system, and there's two branches, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. Do you remember any of that from school? Now the parasympathetic is also known as the rest and digest response. And I remember it because it's parasympathetic starts with a P, and peace starts with a P, right? So this is the optimal state for digestion. Now, when the parasympathetic is activated, our metabolic fat burning power goes up, right? And that's our friend. Now, the sympathetic is our friend too, but for a totally different purpose. And this is known as the fight or flight, right? This is our stress response. And that's how I remember it, right? Sympathetic S, stress, right? And when we're stressed, our digestion shuts down. Now the classic textbook example is that if a lion were chasing you after you had lunch, right? You wouldn't be concerned with digesting your sandwich. Right? The, the sympathetic nervous system would act effectively to shut down digestion and it would send blood flow away from your belly out to your arms and legs so that you could move quick and to your brain so that you could think. And we like this because it's brilliant for survival. Now, while most of us don't confront lions on our lunch, we do encounter stress. And on a physiological level, our body doesn't differentiate between a lion chasing you, maybe your boss yelling at you, maybe getting caught in a traffic jam, an argument with your spouse or your kids, or that long to-do list. One is life-threatening and the others are not. But guess what? On a physiological level, they are the same. They both trigger the body to shut down your digestion and store fat. And this decreases our metabolic power. I, 
I'm sure you've heard the word uh, cortisol, right? The hormone, it's like the buzzword always. This is the hormone that's released when we're stressed out. And studies show that increased cortisol in your system leads to fat accumulation. And when there's a lot of cortisol, we tend to uh, accumulate fat right around our belly, right? Right there in our, our upper belly, our abdomen. And it just has that strange effect of fattening up the belly. And even if you think your stress level isn't that high, even if there are times in the day or the week, you know, where it gets a little bit higher, a little bit lower, you know, even if it's at a five or a six, you know, on a one to 10 scale, we are still having that chronic low level stress and we never really get to that parasympathetic reset. We've always got that sympathetic on and it's like keeping the light on all the time. And that has our cortisol going up and keep going up and up and fattening up the belly and it never shuts off. So it's no wonder that it's actually really hard to move that, you know, especially in the belly if we're chronically stressed. So does that make sense? But of course, there's more effects from stress on the body than besides just weight gain. I've got a list of a few other things that, that happen. Besides the cortisol, you can have decreased nutrient absorption or increased nutrient excretion. And both of those, um, you know, work on, you know, like um, decreased enzymatic production in your stomach and pancreas and liver. Um, it can, you can have a loss and it's usually through urine, right? Calcium, magnesium, potassium, zinc, you know, all the micro minerals that we need. Another thing is increased salt retention. Of course, that leads to high blood pressure. There's a decrease in thyroid hormone, and that can lead to a decrease in metabolic activity throughout the whole body. An increase in blood cholesterol and stress even by itself can raise your LDL level. It can cause an increase in blood platelet aggregation, which of course is a factor, a risk factor in a heart disease. An increase in inflammation, of course, a decrease in sex hormones. Not many of us want that. You can either have an increase in gastric emptying time, which means constipation, or a decrease in gastric emptying time, which means diarrhea, right? Neither one, neither one is good. Another one that I thought was interesting is an increased swallowing rate when you're stressed. And that, that can lead to a digestive upset. So there's a whole, a whole lot of other risk things that are going on in our body besides weight gain if we're stressed. So what are three common stressors that you experience? So just, you know, just kind of take a moment and just think about what are the three things that stress you out the most? Even if your body is in a low level, you know, stress state most of the time, you know, you may lose a few pounds here and there, but ultimately no amount of calorie counting or treadmilling, or whatever is going to get you where you want to go, because your task is to do something of great difficulty. And that is to relax. Now, some people use anxiety and stress to motivate themselves to lose weight. You know, for example, if I don't lose eight pounds, I'm not going to go to the class reunion. Or if I don't go to the gym four days this week, I'm not going to go get a massage. 
right? I mean, I mean, does does this work? I mean, it might once, maybe twice, but it's not sustainable. And the point is, worrying and stressing about weight loss is totally counterproductive. Because to boost metabolism, you must relax and stop producing so much, so much cortisol. So we've talked a little bit about stressors. What are some of your relaxers? So I'm curious, what are some things that have you feel relaxed? Maybe yoga, maybe some meditation, maybe going for a walk. The thing about the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system is that when one is activated, the other is off. It's not like you can have, you know, 80-20 or 60-40 or 50-50. It doesn't work like that. Either it's on or it's off. So if the sympathetic nervous system is on, you're running that low level chronic stress, that parasympathetic is off, right? So in order to activate the parasympathetic, that rest and digest, that fat burning optimal metabolic state, then we have to get you into a relaxation mode. And the answer is, to slow down. Now, before you say, that's not possible, I can't do that, I've got things to do. And I mean, certainly your activities are relaxing and they can help you activate the parasympathetic switch, like going for a walk. But the other is to slow down in certain aspects of your life. Doesn't mean everyone, every aspect but certain aspects of your life to slow down. So the good news is we're going to do an exercise today that will help you activate the parasympathetic right before a meal. And so how do we set up for success? You know, where cortisol is low, the parasympathetic is on, the fat burning is on, right? It takes less than two minutes to de-stress the body and move into that maximum nutritional metabolism. So you can get stress-free anytime, anywhere, and tap into that metabolic power instantly. So you wanna know how? <laughs> so we're going to trick your central nervous system. The shortcut to turn off stress and activate a physiologic relaxation response is conscious breathing. So when we're in a stressful state, if we consciously adopt that deep rhythmic breathing pattern that's, that's characteristic of a relaxed state, we'll fool the central nervous system. Because the brain will say something like, hey, I thought I was a nervous wreck but I'm breathing like a relaxed person. I must be relaxed. And the result is a shift from a state of low digestive activity to full digestive force. And you can actually cure heartburn and IBS, constipation, and fatigue by regularly using the simple technique. So at every meal or snack, Anytime food is about to cross your lips, ask yourself, am I about to eat under stress? And if the answer is yes, then pause and take 10 long, slow, deep breaths. So we're going to try this. This is called the 557 breath. So you're gonna breathe through your nose, breathe in and out through your nose, and you're gonna inhale for five, hold it for five, and then exhale for seven. So the exhale is just a little bit longer than the inhale. So right now, just sit in a comfortable position. 
spine straight, but not rigid, feet flat on the floor, and your eyes can be open or closed. I mean, if you want to leave your eyes open, maybe have like a, a soft downward cast. And we're going to inhale, filling your lungs to about two thirds capacity, counting to five. Let your belly expand with each inhale. Hold it and then exhale for seven. Inhale for five. Hold for five. Exhale for seven. And as you continue this conscious breathing, this steady rhythm, scan your senses. Looking inward, center yourself. And the scent of, of the air in your nose, or if your eyes are closed, the reds and oranges of your eyelids, and your taste buds, and the feeling of your butt in the chair and, and your feet on the ground, the sound of my voice. Just inhale, hold, exhale, and just keep breathing and scanning, just turning in that heightened awareness. And repeat this 10 times. So a, a cycle, so just, you know, maybe six or seven more cycles, right? Right now, so just inhale, holding and exhale, that's one cycle. So a conscious, steady rhythm. And just notice all the fresh breath that's circulating and your heart is thanking you. So go ahead, do a couple more cycles. This is two minutes to relaxation. And you can do this anywhere, anytime, and I love it because it's free. When we are having that low level stress, we're, we're not really breathing. You know, we have that shallow breath, right? So throughout your day, you can actually notice what is the quality of my breath. And I can turn my metabolism on right now by just taking two minutes of conscious breathing. So breathing before and during your meals is a great way to slow down and to help you become a relaxed eater and to boost your metabolic power. And you can, you can do this in your car, at work, before bed, even when there's chaos going on throughout your day. Pay attention to who you are being. Can you relax into the chaos? Now, some people say, if I'm relaxed, I won't get as much done. But relaxing is not necessarily about non-doing. I mean, you know, some things like meditation are non-doing, right? But relaxing is more about who you are being and, you know, and how you're walking through the world. So practice some conscious breathing throughout the day and just working in that rhythm of relaxation. And you'll find that you're more focused, more productive, and more energized. And it's very exhausting to be in that stress state all the time. And you're using up a lot of energy, but you're still storing a lot of fat. So what was that experience of the conscious breathing for you? Did you feel relaxed when you did that? A client came to me recently and she said, Deborah, I have control in every area of my life except food. And, but not only was she carrying some beliefs about food from her childhood that didn't serve her anymore, she also had a work ethic where she must use every minute for work. So what was happening 
is that she would book appointments so close together to squeeze everything out of the day. And she would go through her entire day in that low to medium stress mode. And if she ate at all, it was in a hurry. So we used the conscious breathing technique along with several others to help her relax before eating and before her appointments. And she lost six pounds in one week. And she found she was present with her clients and she, and in that time was really successful in her career. You want to reduce your stress, not because you'll lose weight, which you will, not because you'll have more energy, but you will, and not because you'll be free from constant anxiety, but you will. It's because you'll be healthier, happier, and you'll live longer and be stronger. So I'll wrap up with what total transformation looks like. Now, how many people know what to do, but don't always do it? Right? Yeah, most of us. And that's because knowing isn't enough. It's not what motivates us into action. And we've got a lot of theory, but we're not putting it into practice. And the three ingredients that bring all of this together is the right system, the right support, and the right accountability. And I want to invite you to open up to the possibility that this time really can be different, that you've not yet tried everything. One of the most common questions I get is, Deborah, do you work with people individually, like with private coaching? And yes, I do. I always start with a 60-minute discovery session phone call to create a plan to move you forward to that powerful vision of what transformation looks like for you. Now, the sessions are valued at $97, but because you're here, it's my gift to you. All you have to do is show up for yourself. And at the end of this webinar, I will give you my contact information so that you can contact me and we'll set that discovery session up. I know it's human nature to procrastinate, but I'm telling you that you can you can make the right decision to change your life. Now, I'll, I'll leave you with this. Ninety-five percent of diseases are lifestyle related. What we're eating, our stress level, our sedentary lifestyle, alcohol or cigarette use, My husband is sitting on the exam table and I'm standing next to him and we're waiting for the doctor. The doctor comes in and he doesn't sit down, he comes right up to us. And he said, I'm sorry, Mr. McLean, your cancer has metastasized. You need to go home and put your affairs in order. It's been 11 years since I lost my husband to cancer, and it was kidney cancer, which is caused by cigarettes. Even before he was diagnosed with cancer, he was really, he struggled a lot with stress on his job and depression because life didn't turn out like he expected. He suffered two years of surgeries, radiation, and chemotherapy before he passed away. All of that, the stress, the depression, and the cancer could have been prevented had I know, known then what I know now. And diseases like cancer and diabetes 
and heart disease are not inevitable. There are choices and we can make small changes. I don't want anyone to have to go through this themselves or with someone that they love. There are times in our lives when we think we can do things on our own. But I found that having someone to walk this journey with us can make all the difference in the world. Now is the time to ask for help. Picture what it will be like when you're no longer running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Picture what it will be like when you have more energy than you need. Picture what it will be like when you feel unstoppable. Please let me hear your challenges and your struggles, your visions, your dreams, and let's create a plan that will get you from where you are to where you want to be. So give me just a moment. I'm going to share my screen with my contact information. There's my website, there's my email, Facebook page, and my phone number. So please contact me. We can set up that discovery session and talk about not only your, your dreams and visions, but the things that, you, that are challenging to you, things that you struggle with, things about your lifestyle, about stress, and so that you can be healthier and happier. So please contact me. And if you have any questions about any of this or anything else on health and wellness, I'd be happy to, to talk with you about that. So until next time, I invite you to live well.